everyone, and welcome again to Jason's in the House. I'm your host, Jason Paracello, a real estate agent uh, here in Beverly with Keller Williams Realty. And today we have as our guest Mark Bavaro. He is a former NFL football player with the New York Giants, Philadelphia Eagles, Cleveland Browns. Uh, Mark also grew up in Danvers and currently resides in Boxford. And Mark brings a different perspective on buying and selling real estate, which we're going to talk about, uh, actually touch upon today. Uh, and also, we're going to talk extensively about his NFL career and uh, some, some really um, great information. So, uh, Mark, great to have you on the show. Pleasure to have you here. Great to be here. Excellent. So, why don't we first um, just talk about, you just tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, where you grew up and a little bit about how you started playing football and that type of thing. Sure. Well, um, you know, the football probably came from my father. Uh, he was a football player himself. Uh, he grew up in East Boston, uh, went to Holy Cross, uh, was drafted by the 49ers back in the, I think, 1960s, something like oh, that. Oh, wow. So it was always in the family. <clears throat> he only lasted a couple of years. He had a, had a knee injury. Um, so we kind of always grew up with football in the house and, and things like that. And um, I grew up in Danvers. I graduated Danvers High in 1981. Um, and I always played football from, from a kid, from in, uh, Danvers Youth Football. So we started when we were 10 years old. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, of course, like any other boy, I mean, I always had dreams of, of making it to the big time, playing in the NFL, but it was always... I never really took it that serious. I just had, they were just dreams, but. So did you play football? Was there any other sports you played growing up? I was a track, yeah, because my father was also a teacher uh, at Malden Junior High, and he was the track coach at Chelsea High School. Okay. So I would go to him, I would go with him to the, the practices and all that stuff, and uh, I would, you know, fool around with the high jump and the shot put, and I'd run around the track and all that. So I grew up with a love of track as well. Uh, I was actually uh, a high jumper, um, and I wanted to be a high jumper in the Olympics oh, back wow. in 1976 when Dwight Stones was the, oh, yeah. was the man. <laughs> uh, but something happened when I was uh, about a sophomore in high school. I gained about 100 pounds. Well, I was going to say, you wouldn't, yeah. You... <laughs> yeah, so I was, uh, I still managed to do it throughout <laughs> high school, but it definitely was not, uh, you know, practical to, 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 to keep doing it. Uh, and then my love, you know, for sports turned from track to football. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to say that I, I willed it to happen because I didn't. I just, I was going along the, the treadmill of every other kid that I was around. And when it came time to go to the next level, you know, you know, some kids would drop off. You know, they couldn't do it for whatever reason. And I was always able to go to the next level, uh, not by any anything special that I was doing on my own. I just, just was kind of going through the motions. And, and that would, that's what happened from high school uh, to college. I was able to play at the college level. Um, and then from college to the pros, you know. Whereas so you, I would see tons of my teammates go by the wayside when it came time to go to the next level. I was always able to progress. And, uh, um, and, and, and like I said, not because of anything special I was doing. You know, it just... Sometimes that's just the way it happens. You have to be very, very lucky, I think, to get to the NFL. You have to be talented, but you also have to be very lucky. And I was very lucky at crucial times in my career. Well, that's interesting, you know, because I was going to ask you, what, was, what, what made you different than everybody else that you were able to become an NFL player? And, you know, and you're saying that a lot of it had to do with... Well, you have to be good. I'm I mean, not, it's there not must saying be a I wasn't commitment good. and a focus, or you think yeah, it's you genetics, have... or what do you... I mean, yeah, you know, size... Yes. You're born, you, you know, you, I wasn't, you know, I didn't make myself 6'4", 250 pounds, you know. I mean, right. I was born that. I grew that way because of my father. So you're naturally built for, to be a, you know, yeah, a football and, player. Yeah, and the other thing, too, was uh, I was a tight end, you know, which my position was a, a, a fortunate choice for me because not many people can play tight end. It's a, it's a tough position to play. You have to be versatile across the board, you know. You don't have to be a standout in any one thing, you know, which I really wasn't. I was a good blocker, I was a good catcher, <clears throat> you know, but I wasn't like the best receiver out there and I wasn't the best blocker around. But you have, you have to be kind of balanced throughout and uh, I was and, you know, when it comes time to pick a team for co college and even the pros, you know, when they look at, for tight ends, 
there's not many guys who fit the bill, right? So my, the pool of my competition was smaller to begin with, uh, which made it much easier because I could easily have stayed at linebacker in the in the at college, where I had a, would had to compete against 20, 20 guys as opposed right. to I was able to play tight end. There was three tight ends on the team. So did you play tight end the whole time in college, which was no Dame? Yeah, so I correct? went to Notre Dame yeah. as a tight end slash linebacker. Okay. And they said, you know, we have tons of linebackers, but we, we, we need tight end. So give, give tight end a shot for us and see what happens. And that's what happens. So, so I, would, I, I guess, I don't know if this is the right wording or not, but it, it sounds like you, fortunately, that you were able to catch passes, obviously, because you went from a linebacker where you didn't have to deal with that right. to you know, having to make sure you're catching the pass. Right, I mean, and it, my, my first love is linebacker. I always wanted to play defense. Shows I, there's I, a lot of linebackers that would never be able to be tight ends because well, they, they just don't have the hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I, had, I had that coordination going for me, which, you know, helped me to not only play tight end, but, you know, ultimately, you know, I, succeed, I excelled at it, you know. I mean, right. I was a pretty good tight end, you know, which, yeah, was, I remember which surprised, you. surprised me as much as anybody else from around here because when I left here, um, you know, I didn't have a lot of fanfare. You know, a lot of people, when I went to Notre Dame, people were scratching their heads like... Um, but you're definitely a name in this area. You were... A well, very, I became one. Yeah, right? you but definitely I mean, became one. In high school, there was, a, a, there was a lot of skepticism as to why I was going to such a, a high level of college football. So what but, was, why, why did you end up uh, deciding Notre Dame? Um, it's an interesting, interesting story. I mean, there was a girl involved, and... Okay, so yeah, <laughs> probably wasn't the you know the smartest basis to make a choice you know to make a decision on, but uh, it worked out and um, it definitely was uh, a challenge. You know, I mean, uh, I didn't get to play at Notre Dame until I was a junior. Wow. So I mean, there was two years of self doubt, possibly some regret. You know, making the wrong choice. Uh, and uh, escape plans, you know. I almost left Notre Dame uh, a bunch of times, you know. Uh, but around my junior year, through attrition, they didn't have a tight end. Like I said, you know, going back right. to fortune circumstances, uh, the team physically did not have a tight end on the roster that they felt they could put on the field. Uh, so it it was there. It was really kind of just there for me, for me to, to step into it, as long as I all I really had to do was just stay in school. So, and even that was a challenge. I almost I almost didn't stay in school, but uh, I'm sure that's a challenge. Just in you know being a, a, you know playing a sport in the college at that high level, and then just keeping up with your grades and the schoolwork is, is a challenge. Yeah, especially at Notre Dame. You know, Notre Dame's it was a hard school. Yeah. Um, Probably not the best choice for me academically because you know I wasn't a great student uh, and I didn't even want to go to college. You know, yeah. I, mean, I didn't. I didn't go to college to go to college. I went there to play football and for the first, for, you know, for two years. That's a long time when you're a kid. Two years is a long time to just be met with failure after failure after failure. Um, you know, I had to stick it out and you know. I, I, almost, I almost didn't. I'm not, not saying that. Yeah, so I, you must have been gone to a point where you're thinking, well, geez, maybe I could become a, or your dream was to be an NFL football player, and then you're thinking, you're, yeah, but yeah, I mean, at that even, point, is, I was, at that yeah, point, I was like, thinking football's about not even in my future now. You know, right. I can't, I, if I can't play can't here, play, I, right, I'm not, not playing play. pro. So I was, I was thinking about other things to do, you know what I mean? So yeah. the, the, the prospect of staying at Notre Dame and going to classes and doing homework and writing papers and taking tests, I mean, that wasn't really part of the plan for me, you know. Right. But fortunately, timing worked out the way it did. The, the spot opened up on the team for me to, to really start getting some playing time and having fun. And uh, I, was, I was able to, you know, suck up the rest of the schoolwork and, and finish. Good. So you must have obviously had a good or a great junior year and senior year that you started getting recognized. Yeah, I had a decent junior year and I had a pretty good senior year and I ended up making a AP All-American. Uh, back then, the All AP All-American team uh, would go to the Bob Hope Christmas special and were introduced on his Christmas special show. So I got to do that, got to fly oh, nice. out to Hollywood and or wherever they filmed it and uh, I was on the show, and he, he he made a joke about me. It was it was pretty cool for my family to see, and uh, I was nervous as heck, you know. Yeah, wow, that's quite an experience. Yeah. 
So, and then you, so you, junior year you played, your uh, senior year. When did you start really talking with the NFL when they, or when they approached you? And what kind of, how did that well, work. Well, it's a process, you know. You know, no one's in control of it. It's like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty much an assembly line. You know, you, you get on it. You, you're, you're a senior in college. The scouts come in. They ask who's a senior, who's a, and they, they, and they knew who I was because I had been playing. So they come in one by one and they work you out. Today, the big thing is the combine. Well, I was just going to say the combine. It wasn't so. It wasn't as official. As well, that. There was, it was the, the combine was there back then, they, where they invited the top 100 players from college to go to the combine. I didn't get invited. So, I see. I mean, so you I weren't in the you, top. I wasn't 100. in the top 100. Yeah. Uh, so if if teams wanted to look at me, they had to actually come uh, and check me out on campus. <clears throat> and I went to um, the beer. I went to the Chicago facility because <clears throat> we were so close to um, Chicago for like a a league wide physical that they they s disseminated to all the all the teams. And then I also flew out to Atlanta. I flew out to the Patriots. I flew out to Seattle and maybe Kansas City. They they check you out. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a process. And um, I don't know what was going to happen. But on draft day, the Giants ended up picking me in the fourth round. Fourth round, wow. Uh, and I was the 100th player chosen in the draft, which I've always found pretty interesting. You know? Interesting. 100, 100 on the nose. So who was the first round draft pick that year? Do you remember? I don't know who the first round draft pick was. I yeah, that's okay. No, I'm just curious. Know. Yeah. So that was, what year was that? 80? Um, that was 85. 85? Yeah. So 85 was the year that the Patriots played the... Bears That's right. in the Super Bowl and lost to the Bears. I mean, I was a you know I was a local kid you know so I was a big Patriot fan back then and I was yeah. I was man I couldn't and I was out in Chicago area you know at Notre Dame who only it's only like an hour and a half away from Chicago you know so they consider themselves Chicago area uh, and I was sick of uh, hearing all about the Bears you know so I was right. that was, I was rooting such a, my heart a out for the Patriots then, yeah. yeah so did I'm, you actually play against the Patriots that year? Uh, in 85, no. I don't think so, no. So you got drafted in 85, so, so you got drafted by the... Um, the Giants. The Giants. So that's, that's we ended up playing the Bears in the playoffs in 85 and got our butts handed to us. Oh, so, but you didn't play the Patriots that year? Didn't play the Patriots, no. We, so I you ended played... up losing to the Bears in the playoffs? Yeah. Okay. I've only played the Patriots you know, maybe two or three times that I can remember in my career. Yeah. yeah it didn't happen very often. So you end up at the New York Giants, 1985. So what happened? Uh, how did your career go? And how about the team? And talk a little bit about the team well, and some I of mean, the accomplishments. All right, here's another example of, of being fortunate. You know, I got to the, the Giants. Um, so did you play the first year? You were starting did. tight end? I did. But only because back then, teams didn't usually play two tight ends. You know, nowadays you see two tight ends, three tight ends in formations. That it's pretty prevalent. Yeah. Back then, you know, teams only, you know, you only had one tight end that played at, at a time. Uh, <clears throat> so we had a, we had a good, <clears throat> excuse me, we had a good tight end. And Zeke Mowat. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> remember me. that name. And he, he ended up coming to the Patriots. Uh, yeah, I remember Zeke Mowat. Had a little controversy himself with one of the reporters, uh, Lisa Olson, I think. In New York? No, at the Patriots. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so it was that. If you remember. Um, but anyways, Zeke was a, was a great tight end, and uh, I was looking at a future of sitting on the bench, you know, which, you know, right. I wasn't that happy about, but, um, but the last preseason game of the preseason before the first game, he blew his knee out against the, the Steelers. So... I was the only tight end on the team because they had already. So they had, they had one backup, and it was they had you. One backup was me. They had cut the the rest of them. The other backup was uh, Don Hasselback, uh, yeah. the father of the Hasselbacks. He he's an old Patriot guy. Uh, they had to bring him back actually to help coach me through my rookie year, which was I was very fortunate to have that. But yeah. um, Without Zeke Moad blowing his knee out, I mean, I might never have played in, in the NFL. It's amazing how things so. happen. Yeah, the circumstances. Lucky break. Yeah. So that was 85, um, 86. 86, we, we ended up winning the Super Bowl. So 85, I had a decent year. 86, I had a great year. 
Um, so Phil Sims was a quarterback. Phil Sims yeah. was a quarterback. You know, we had Lawrence Taylor, Kyle Banks, Harry Carson on the defense. I mean, we, our defense was spectacular. Our offense was pretty good. Joe Morris was a local kid from AO Mass. Uh, he was our running back. He was unbelievable. Uh, we had a we had a good line. We had a, we had a good team. You know, we had a good like all around team like like the Patriots of today. Yeah. Where they're not necessarily great players everywhere, but good solid players across the board. And we did have superstars. We had Lawrence Taylor was our superstar. You right. know, Phil Sims was was our, was our superstar. Lawrence Taylor was probably the most well known. I would think at that time. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. There's a few other linebackers though that. Um, well, Kyle Banks Kyle was a Banks, great yeah. linebacker. Harry Carson's was a great linebacker. <clears throat> George Martin was a great D lineman. Leonard Marshall was a great oh, D yeah. lineman. Jim Burt was our nose guard. He was unbelievable. Um, so, what was your experience playing with Lawrence Taylor? I mean, he was <sighs> certainly, you know, not only a very popular player however you'd also hear about other things that was oh, happening. Yeah, he was totally crazy yeah, he was crazy and he was great you know and uh he was a the the, the blessing the, the being on the team with Lawrence Taylor was a blessing and a curse <clears throat> the blessing was you know everybody I played against besides Lawrence Taylor was easy right and it was always great to have on your team because you knew right. uh, the, 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 the other team's offense wasn't, wasn't going to score that many points, which meant we didn't have to score that many points to win. Right. Uh, the curse was I had to practice against them every day. Yeah. You know, um, through, throughout, you know, as time went on and I was accepted into the fold and we became, you know, real teammates, uh, he would take it easy on me and yeah. vice versa and all that stuff. So it was kind of a little easier. But for, I'd say the first year or so, I mean, it was every day was, and back then we hit every day. Wow. Not like today, every day was was a, was game like conditions, and you know the guy in front of me was Lawrence Taylor, which made my life hard. But like wow. I said, made it's Sundays easy because yeah. there was nobody like him in the league, and except maybe Andre Tippett. Yeah. For the, the Patriots. Patriots. Yeah. Anybody else I ever played against uh, was. I so never, Andre Tippett, you would say, him. would be was yeah. Andre Tippett was, was stood out as someone very difficult to play against. Yeah. Yes, he he was he was one of the best ever, no question about it. He's in the Hall of Fame. He belongs there. He deserves yeah. it. Yeah, um, and he's he's definitely on the level of uh, Lawrence Taylor. I mean, people won't give him the credit, but right. I mean, he, he he is, he is, and he was. Interesting. So that was '86, and then. Um, I think you, because you actually ended up winning two Super Bowls. Yeah, so 86 and 87, uh, we went on strike. We had our first strike, and, you know, we blew it. Uh, we, our, our replacement team wasn't any good. So we, our replacement team lost every game, right? So the Washington Redskins actually put, a, put together a good replacement team, and they won all their games. And, but when we all came back, it was all a mess, and they, yeah. ended, up, they ended up going to Super Bowl and winning uh, 86 or no, 87. So 88 was you know we we were good we were almost won the division 89 i blew my knee out against the chargers uh i missed half the season and 90 i came back uh w with my knee in a 90 we won this the super bowl in 90 and then uh, because of complications with my leg the giants uh released me after the super bowl uh and i had to go I was out of the league. No one wanted to touch me. So that was how many years? So that was uh, about five years in the league? Six years at six the end. The six league. years of the Giants. That's about an average career at that well, point, Well, the average career is only three. Three? Yeah, wow. three, three and a half, something like that. Uh, so, so you we, actually were already ahead of the game at that point. Yeah, yeah. But I, ha I actually had to come back and uh, sit out a year in rehab. Uh, in the interim, Bill Belichick got the Cleveland coaching job. And when we said goodbye at the Giants, he said, listen, if you think you can have a play again, give me a call. So that's what I did. So I was feeling good and went through up. I, I, you know, through the 91 season, I was feeling like I was getting better. And I called him. I said, I think I can play. You know, he, said, All right. he brought me in for a tryout uh, in between the 91, 92 season. He liked what he saw and against the uh, wishes of the doctor. He signed me uh, to a one year contract. So he let me back in the NFL, which was huge wow. you know, for me. So no it was one Bill Belichick that did that? Bill Belichick. Wow. Me, yeah. No one else would have given me a chance. And, uh, and to be even more gracious, after that year was done, I had a great offer from Philadelphia and free agency. 
uh, that Cleveland, the Cleveland organization wouldn't match. Mm -hmm. And and I felt bad about leaving Cleveland because they had given me a chance to come back. And and Belichick sat me down and said, you know, listen, you 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 only have a couple of years left because we can't pay, we can't match what Philadelphia right. is giving you. So he goes, just go and get your money while you can. Don't worry about me. Yeah. I thought that was I thought that was really nice of him. You so know. you've gotten you have firsthand experience as Bill Belichick as your coach and someone that you. Yeah, Bill Belichick's a great coach. With yeah. And, yeah. Well, like you know, he was our coach at the Giants too, so I knew him from. Oh, the so Giants. he was the assistant he was, coach. He was the yeah, he was the defensive, defensive? Uh, coordinator. Okay. Um, and he was the linebacker coach. Bar, uh, Bill Parcells was the the head coach. Parcells yeah. was the head coach. So Belichick was the linebacker coach, so we would always do our drills with the linebackers. So, I mean, I, I had a lot more experience with him uh, than most players, except for the linebackers, you know. And um, he's a great guy, great coach, and he's, 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 you know, he's a good person, and he's funny. I mean, you, won't, you don't notice that if you just judge him by the press conferences. Right. But uh, he really is a, he's a good guy. He's fun to hang around with, and uh, I, I, I respect him a lot. Awesome. So uh, you have a few photos that you brought. Yep. Got to walk us a little bit through All whatever right. in your career a little bit. So this one. Uh, so this one. This one is. Um, here you go. That's me. The light uh, scoring a touchdown in the Super Bowl against the Broncos in '86, '86 season, '87 Super Bowl. And the cool thing about that is this is just this happened just after uh, halftime uh, when we were losing. And the cool thing about this picture, I don't know if you can pan into it, the scoreboard is right above my head, and if you can see it, it says Broncos 10, Giants 9. I can barely make that out, yeah, right? 10, 10 so 9. This touchdown uh, was the go-ahead touchdown in the Super Bowl because we never lost, we never lost the lead again. So, after after the, so, so, so this was the winning so I consider the it the winning touchdown, right. yeah. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. That was the winning touchdown. The so Super that was Bowl. always, you played against John Elway. In the, in John the Elway, yeah. yeah. Um, this, is a, this is just a, a nice painting. Sean Stilato, he's a local uh, yeah. sports agent. He's, been in, the, he's in, the, in the paper quite yeah. often. I've, I've read about him, yeah. Yeah, he's, he, an agent. He, he's a good guy. Uh, he had this drawn up for me. It was pretty cool because it cr kind of chronicles the career. There's the Giants. I was there's Notre Dame, and uh, I can't see what the fine print is, but it's like the two-time Super Bowl champion. Yeah, it Notre says All -American, All American at Notre, at Notre Dame, Dame, and then you know two-time Super Bowl champ, yeah. tight end for the Giants. So, is, was your agent Sean? Or no, 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 Sean was just a kid. You know. He oh, was, so he was. Yeah, that's there. okay. <clears throat> and I love this picture because this is me and my brother. David, that's when I was on the Giants and he was on the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, and someone snapped a shot of that as we were walking off the field together after a game. So who won that game? Oh, the Giants because the Cardinals yeah. were horrible. But uh, <laughs> I have other pitches when I was on Cleveland and he was on Minnesota where they, they beat us pretty good. Uh, but I like this one just because um, I think because we won. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, you, it's, a, it's a great it, – it, to, to have my brother – I mean, my little brother, be able to, to, to make the NFL was huge. And then to be, actually be on the same field at the same time playing amazing. was, was a, gr a great experience. I, I just wish that we had been able to play together. You know, the, same the same team, team. would have been great. Yeah, it would have been great, yeah. So um, I know that we're going to be um, short for time. So let, let's um, – two things I want to touch on before we – we've got about five minutes left. Just – Generally, your thoughts on real estate as you, you know, throughout your career, you moved around different areas that you, you know, experienced selling, you know, buying and selling homes, and how do you feel like that compares to this area? It's a little bit of a okay. overview on that from your perspective. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I've lived in the Cleveland area. I've lived in the Philly area. I've lived in the New York area, and I've lived here. I mean, of, of all the places, and, I, and I've seen the, the country. I've seen everything because, you know, not just from playing, but I, I've been around to me, there's no greater place than the North Shore of Boston. I mean, and I'm, I'm not saying Boston. I'm saying the North Shore of Boston. Because mm -hmm. even if I had to live here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't live out in the western suburbs. I wouldn't live on the South Shore. I just don't like it down there. I like it up here. 
you got the water, you got you got downtown if you want, it's right there. You got the mountains if you're a skier. I mean, it's close beautiful. To everything, yeah. Close to everything, and it, the great people here, great history. I mean, I'm a history buff. Um, I love the character, the personality of this area. Uh, and as far as real estate, you know, um, I've had, um, you know, I bought a house in, in New Jersey that, you know, I sold for what I bought it for, so I didn't make anything there. Cleveland, we rented. Uh, Philly, we rented, so I didn't really buy stuff there. But I bought, I bought um, property in Florida, in Naples, Florida. I lived there for a little while, too. <clears throat> um, that was hit or miss. But up here, you know, uh, we bought a house in, in Topsfield that we sold. We made some money on it. Uh, now we have a house in Boxford that we live in. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if it's, if it's appreciating or not. Right, yeah. But hopefully I won't have to find out for, for a few more years. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, owning a home is great, you know, especially if you're raising a family, if you can afford it and do it. I mean, right. Yeah. Excellent. So that's good to hear that you like this area the best. Oh, by far. I wouldn't, I wouldn't and you've live, got some experience. That's why I wanted else. to bring it up to see what you what you really thought. Yeah, excellent. And the last thing I wanted to touch upon uh, also is kind of like the um, NFL now and then, and specifically to this, the topic of concussions, injuries, your experience. You know, do you feel like things have really changed? And you know, you hear all about the concussions now. Do you think it's worse? But, you know, I mean, was it all happening when you were playing? And your personal experience with in your comments about that. Well, I mean, it seems like it's more prevalent now because nobody paid attention to it back then. <clears throat> so I'm not saying it, 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 it's better or worse, but it's definitely on everybody's mind now. Um, and as far as p who gets concussions, who doesn't get concussions, I, I, I really do think it's a genetics type of thing, and some people are more predisposed to it than others. I never really had a, I was never diagnosed with a concussion in my career. Um, but nowadays, they'll say any time that you get dinged or you feel a little lightheaded, they'll call that a concussion. So, I mean, I probably had, I had thousands of those. So you would have probably gotten called out at least, you know. There might have been, there might have been one or two <laughs> incidents where I would have maybe had to take this baseline test now that they, that they have nowadays. <clears throat> um, but, you know, the, the, it's the long-term <clears throat> effects of the concussions that I, that I think are really the, the troubling ones. And, uh, and you, I do see some of those in my, my contemporaries, you know. Uh, like I yeah. we were saying before, like I, I knew Junior Seau pretty well. Uh, I played at Notre Dame with Dave Dewison. I played at the Giants with Dave Dewison. I played uh, on the Eagles with Andre Waters. Uh, there was another guy, Tom McHale, on the Eagles that I played with. I mean, all these guys either, you know, committed suicide or like, and I think in Tom's case, it was some, some sort of a self-destructive type of thing, but uh, that, that they all <laughs> attributed to um, CTE stuff, you know, mm -hmm. uh, concussion stuff. I mean, I, d I don't know, I don't know what's what. Uh, I know my brother was a linebacker, so if there's anybody who has uh, mental problems, it's going to be him rather than me, you know. He... <laughs> <clears throat> he played with his head, you know, you have to when you're a linebacker. Right. Uh, and I look at him, and he's a teacher at Marlin Catholic. He's doing fine. I don't see any, any problems with him. So I do think it's a case-by-case -case study, but I do think the ones, the, the guys who do have problems should be helped. You know, I mean, the right. NFL's making tons of money. If they had just went ahead and helped out the guys who were having problems <laughs> from the get-go, they I don't think they would have all, all these problems. The, the problem with them is... By helping, I think that they were, they thought, they perceived it as admitting guilt or yeah, admitting liability. Yeah, I think there's liability. something going on there. I mean, I watched, the, I saw the movie <clears throat> Concussion. Um, seems like there's some... Yeah, so if they were less worried about themselves and more worried about their players, you know, they might not be in the pickle that they're in now. Because right. now it's open season yeah. for the NFL with this concussion lawsuit, you know. I mean, there's thousands of players. I mean, I, I, even I'm part of it. You know, just you, you sign on just in case. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. So right. everybody's just signing on, you know, just in case. And uh, they got a problem on their hands. Yep. Interesting. Uh, one last thing I just want to mention. We're going to wrap up. The 1981 graduating class from you. So you graduated high school in 1981. Right. There's quite a class we were talking about earlier. Bobby yeah. Carpenter. Bobby Carpenter at the prep. I think it was Peabody kid, right? He went on to have a great NHL, NHL career. 
Patrick Ewing was Cambridge Ringe and Latin in 81. He actually played for the, so New York played team. Played for the Knicks. Next, I mean, yeah. I was coaching that at Georgetown. I mean, guy's spectacular career. And, um, of course, everybody's favorite, Doug Flutie. Yeah. At Nate Akai in 1981. Uh, we all know about him. I actually played against him uh, in the Shriners All-Star game <clears throat> um, in the summer of 80, 81. So, uh, Quite a graduating class. Yeah, and I had never heard of him before. You know, so I mean, for Massachusetts, it's it's it's, it's pretty, pretty special uh, year for sports. Yeah, excellent. Well, uh, very interesting show. Thank you very much for watching uh, the show. We really appreciate it, and we want to thank Bev Kim for all their help as usual. And we would love to see you next time. And uh, please visit my website, Jason Paracella Team dot com for any further information and we'll see you next time. Thank you.